So, good afternoon. Welcome back to uh, Puerto Portals. We're waiting for the race number five of the uh, Puerto Portals 52 Super Series Sailing Week. Uh, conditions much the same as we had uh, for race four. They've moved the race course uh, further inshore and uh, to the west. They should perhaps have a, a slightly different track. Breeze is still around about 2 to 5 degrees, 1.8 mile uh, beat for this leg. Hopefully we can join uh, Jenny uh, Taloch on the water. Jenny, how are the conditions looking? You know, it's beautiful now. We had a short postponement there in between the races as the breeze died a little bit. We've moved more towards the shoreline here, closer to the airport, in fact, where Maria Treo, the principal race officer, thought we would have better conditions, and she was spot on about it. We um, we saw the breeze as far right in the last race as 2.40 when they changed the weather mark directly to due west, and now we're back at a 2.25 wind direction for this next race. So breeze slightly more left than what we were seeing in the first race, but again, back up to almost maybe 10 knots here. Um, Going to be a beautiful second race today. How's the, uh, how's the first windward leg looking in terms of uh, wind pressure and your, your uh, ideal choice, Jen? You know, I'm not sure it's as right-hand favorite as the first race was. The first race we were absolutely calling probably better pressure right, and in fact, the team second and third came from the right while sled came from the middle. But I think here we might see we might see a, this, a split in the fleet and a, and a decision as to whether they think the right's going to pay again like it did the first race at a 225 direction or whether the typical um, Bay of Palma slightly more left slightly more from the Cabo Blanco direction side um, working out. I'm not quite sure. The line itself looks fairly even for where you would start in the speed. And I think probably we're not seeing it nearly as windward favored in terms of the fleet setting up here. We saw a couple of the boats in the last start being held out, pushed high at the start. Although again, at two minutes just now, the fleet is all on port tack all sailing towards us on this committee end of the line. So maybe we will again see a big fight for the committee end. And we're coming into race five of the uh, 10 race series. We'll be halfway through uh, after today. What are your thoughts in terms of the, uh, the risks? How high risk do you go on this start line? You know, I don't think any of the teams necessarily are trying to play high risk at the current moment. I think some of the teams just made a mistake last time, not quite yeah. realizing how far, how early and how far they were to the right of the committee boat. And in, in fact, I don't think we will see that that fleet, that pack set up here this early this time. Um, we've got Azura, the boat who was furthest to the right last time, who had fouled up to one rid of the committee and had to circle back to even get towards the line. They are now setting up lured most on the line. Azura essentially just learning from that mistake last time. Or maybe as the team who bases their boat here, maybe they want the left for sure this time. So Azura lured most boat here. Then just to weather of them, Proveza is ju just ducking underneath Gladiator. They have 55 seconds to go up the line from Gladiator. Allegre just luffing towards platoon then a big gap to ron racing who currently still sit atop of the leaderboard even though they didn't have the best last race so ron has a very big hole there with which they can pull the trigger and sail a bit comfortably down towards platoon and then in fact sled who won the last race they are trying to win the boat again here with 30 seconds to go they have to kill a bit of time actually before the start line they might in fact be over this could possibly be setting up for a general recall here as we have much of the fleet early to the line with just 20 seconds to go and then above sled quantum lacing and a bit of a precarious position here right Not at the boat if sled, <laughs> yeah if sled lets them open opens the door and they are opening the door for quantum there seven seconds to go and Brunenisek, just as you said off the stern of quantum Brunenisek will get in here two seconds one second gun Nobody over early. The call that there was a general was just a bad call on my part. The, sleep, the fleet pretty much nailing it. I think Azura at the pen maybe just barely having to luff up and, and avoid the pen there. I thought they were going to have a good start, but no. Azura at the pen and then Brennanisek tacking off at the boat here. Um, so maybe it's Quantum Racing from the boat end leading or is it Platoon in the middle? You guys tell me. Yeah, I think Quantum had the best start on this uh, on this committee boat end of the line. Uh, Brennanisek uh, came in a little bit late and have tacked off uh, onto port. Nick, what do you think of Quantum Star? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm not surprised to see them tacking here. Those two guys uh, putting, taking a little bit of risk at, there at the boat. They seem to like that right side. Platoon starting in the middle, they get they get to make the decision. Do they go with Brennanisek and Quantum, who have the next best starts up, up the line there? Do they follow them out to the right side, or do they keep going to the left side um, as Azura is out there winning the pin end there and getting out to the left side quickly? So it'll be, it'll be quite of a split split here. Um, teams sort of deciding whether they're going to like the right side be better or they're going to like the left side better. 
Um, we'll see how it comes out at the end of the at the end of the leg here. Certainly, early doors. It looks like a Brennanisek and Quantum, the two boats that started nearest the committee boat. Brennanisek, uh, nice pace just now. Azura not looking bad there either. Bow forward uh, on uh, platoon and rolling into their tack and platoon going at the same time. Yeah, so you're seeing Azura and platoon tack here. Azura coming from the pin, now able to cross almost everybody uh, that did not tack. So they seem to be liking that right side a little bit more than we would have thought. Uh, I certainly expected the boats to sort of head towards the left end of the race course, but it's a little bit more open. You see a lot more, uh, a lot more of the boats spread out throughout the race course so we'll see how it ends up in the last race uh the the boat that was that, that won the beat was was sled and they were in a very similar position to where they are now the yeah, same yeah. boat sled and quantum on that middle right side not all the way on the right um, but azura in a very strong spot we saw a gladiator come in in third on the first leg of the last race uh, in a very similar spot to where azura is now so we'll see how those things work out um Basically, the boats will be looking for pressure and a little bit of shift here. So if Brennanisek and Quantum feel like they get a little bit of a righty, they'll take it across, maybe put it back in front of the rest of the boats up the course if they think the right side's a little bit better, or they'll take it across if they think they see better pressure on the left. Uh, the boats on the left will be looking to stick there, hoping a right shift doesn't come in, um, and probably just going to wait until those boats to the right of them tack and have them make the first move. So Jen, where are you? In the, you're on the right side again, alongside Brennanisek or off the pin? Exactly, yeah, we're seeing Brennanisek setting up here really nicely just underneath Quantum Racing. And then again, five boats have tacked out. I was thinking Azura might go all the way out to the left-hand side. Of hard favoring for the right but i do like now as we come up the course there is seems to be solid breeze all the way up to the to the um chop mark here for nanosec though not quite in as good a groove i think as quantum racing quantum racing just able to maybe sail a bit higher and a bit faster here does it look like they're making gains yeah, the virtual shows them making a couple of meters gain. They show Brennanisek in first here, but I'd be interested to see if Brennanisek tacks if they are crossing Azura cleanly. I think that Azura are a little bit closer to Quantum and Brennanisek than what the virtual is showing right now. Uh, those guys in the port, port tack up, up there on the left side look pretty good. Um, it is, we see Prevetza and Gladiator. Prevetza was that one boat that went all the way to the right side in the last race. Now they're all the way on the left side. Uh, those boats are a little bit farther out than what we saw in the previous race, so maybe we're looking at a little bit more of an open race course. And Quantum taking the lead here on the on the uh, virtual. It might have been just a little bit of a glitch, but um, you can see in the tracks that the boats are actually getting a little bit lifted on port tack here, so not surprising that everybody's on port. Um, Brennanisek, again, looking for that righty Quantum as well attack and cross. Uh, they're going to be looking at how their bearings are against Azura there uh, to see if they can cross the rest of the guys because right under Azura is half, half a boat length back or the three or four boats there. So risky for Brennanisek and Quantum but if they get a righty they're going to look pretty good here. Same with Gladiator and Prevetsa out on the left. Any kind of left shift they're going to look great. Uh, any kind of right shift and they're going to be very far behind. So a lot of risk taken by uh, those four teams there. The guys in the middle a little bit less risk but also a little bit more of a, of a fight there. So they will be going a little bit slower, probably going to get tacked on a little bit more than the other boats might just because there are more boats around fighting for the same spots there. Certainly Quantum a little bit better up this uh, first beat than they were in the, uh, the previous race. Top, uh, top three, top four, that's always what Terry Hutchinson will tell you he wants on the... Uh, the first beat, you don't have to win it out of the park on the first leg. You just need to be in a position to attack and uh, chip away is his favorite expression. Yeah, Quantum's certainly tripping away at Brennanisek right now. Uh, we'll check and take another look at the when we see the bigger view of the uh, virtual here to see how Azura is doing. But it looks like Gladiator and Prevetsa are making some gains there on the left side, at least in distance. Um, they were more 25, 30 meters behind. Now they're getting closer to the rest of the fleet. Uh, so things might end up being very close here at the top. 
as you see the boat's still getting lifted, you see their tracks sort of bending to the left. Uh, those guys in the middle, not bending quite as much. It's probably because they're sort of messing with each other's breeze there, but definitely the guys uh, Sled and Quantum and Brennanisek out there getting a left-hand shift that they probably don't want right now. They're, they're definitely looking for that righty pretty soon here as they approach ley line. You do tend to find the righty comes in the top third of this beat as you get uh, further offshore. Jen, how's it looking? Yeah, it is only getting better and better as we come up this course. We had to do a little research in between the, the first and the second races. The, the cape on the left side, the cape that so often comes into play in the Bay of Palma from the typical sea breeze, we all know it as the Cabo Blanco, but this one that, that shelters the right-hand side of the bay, the side that we are now all aimed towards on Port Tac, it's called Cabo de Cala Figuera, which I believe means Cape of the Bay of the Fig Tree. Um, but it's absolutely what Brunetta Set Gazprom is aimed at right now. You can see their bow it fully in line with that. And just between us and that cape, there is really good lines of pressure, really good bands of pressure. So while we've seen the breeze go left about 15 degrees from its max right in last race, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it possibly shift right again um, after this. I know you guys are calling a lefty right now out there on the left-hand side, but I'm, I'm not little, sure it'll stay. <laughs> a little bit of a header there for Brennanisek on the extreme right also with Quantum. Yeah, and Gladiator and Pavetta coming out here and the virtual seem to be leading now all of a sudden. Those boats that were uh, bad starts at the port end and uh, stayed on starboard for a while as the, as the guys who got good starts flopped onto port tack. Uh, you definitely see those three boats that are close to each other in the middle, Ran, Azura, and I believe Platoon. Uh, for sure slowing each other down just a little bit uh, there, but Quantum, Sled, and Brennanisek, big header here, what the virtual says, about and a, and 10 or 15 by degrees. And pressure things, a little bit more pressure on that but, side. Um, yeah, so, and a little bit more pressure. Should be good gains for them, but the, that, that only is going to work if the left side sees the same shift. Um, we see a couple of the boats in the middle starting to see it, but Gladiator and Prevetsa still high on Port Tack here. Um, we'll see, we'll, we'll look to see Brennanisek and Quantum lead the charge on starboard here. Um, they'll probably tack soon, as soon as they think they can cross Azura comfortably. Um, They've led the charge right now, in fact, Renata Set Gazprom just tacking. As they got that pressure, you could, you could hear their main shell ease, you could see them trimming on the runners, and then instantly they kind of went for the tack, so I think it was a pressure line and even more righty, and quantum flops underneath for Nemesek. So the question here for Sled, do they take the sterns? And it looks like, yes, Sled is going to dig into it a bit more, taking the sterns of Quantum and for Nemesek Gazprom. So maybe just trying to make slightly bigger gains on the fleet behind. But I think this right shift, this right pressure will be huge advantage to these three boats that are out on the right. Yeah, we wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised to see Quantum and Brennanisek around this mark in first and second. They do look very, very strong. Gladiator and Prevetsa still riding that left. You can see on the, on the live stream here, they're yeah. a little bit higher angle than the boats here on the right. Um, it'll be interesting to see which one of those breezes wins uh, coming up to the top mark to see if the left stays or if those boats on the left do get that header um, and end up having to duck pretty far below Quantum and Gazprom there. The sled going out farther to the right, trying to learn from the last race. Uh, they got that pretty big header and seems to be only two boats on starboard, which is surprising after such a big lit, uh, shift to see sled tacking now, a couple of the other boats tacking underneath. Um, I believe that's Prevetsa over there. It looks like they might have tacked out as well, but uh, definitely a big ready here. We'll see what, what continues to change. That was a that was very sudden and, and quite a big quite a big shift. So um, look to see for things to be a little bit more unstable at the top of the leg here. So certainly sled the winner of the last race uh, very much in the mix just now, Jen, and third on our virtual. Yeah, third and slash I, second. I think as Nick was saying, if it goes right even further, I think they've given themselves just enough leverage that if we see maybe a 10 degree righty, it would be great odds for sled to be possibly leading this race. In fact, Quantum, who was not being rolled by Brunenisek, Quantum has decided to tack out for even more. So I think the assumption there, maybe there is more to come and they don't want to make that loss to sled. Although I think at the moment they have 
Well, we'll see. Right now is the moment of truth. Is Quantum going to cross sled, or are they going to do a half? I have to do a last minute duck or a last minute leave out. It looks like so. Quantum had lost that distance to sled. They were not crossing. They're having to leave out here, and I wonder if for Nenesek, when they come back, if they're going to have the same problem, if they will be able to do the same sled, having to tack out after that leave out, deciding they've got at least a tiny bit more distance up to that starboard ley line, and for. Nenesek, and also quite a little ping pong game between I think what are the top three guys here um, fighting out for this right hand side trying to take every little lefty back to the right side and we'll see if they have to do too many tacks if they make losses to Gladiator and I believe it's Prevetza on the far side coming back on port tack yeah those two boats taking a pretty big risk by going out to the left side there uh, sort of what they needed to do after the start that they had so not surprising to see them out there, but it looks good for a while. Now they're sort of back in the middle of the fleet on the virtual. Definitely Quantum, Brennanisek, and Sled in the top here. You're going to probably see um, all those boats sort of fighting for a spot on the ley line. Wouldn't be surprised that Brennanisek tacked pretty close after Sled here. Yeah. Um, and I think they're pretty close to the ley line with that big right shift. Um, Quantum just under, I believe, but you'll probably see them tack back. Maybe get a lee bow off on Sled. If not, they're going to duck those two boats and follow in behind. Um, Again, wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of jive sets at the top here if, they, if this righty stays. Quantum just going behind. Yep, so Quantum ducking behind these two boats now. You'll see them most likely tack very soon after uh, they duck the stern there. Brennanisek tacking on ley line there. The next couple of boats, Platoon making a very big gain. It looked like they were close to last, but they're getting, <laughs> they're getting back into the game here. Definitely a lot, of, uh, a lot of separation on that upwind. It's all somehow come together, and boats are going to end up a lot closer than what they look to be uh, on the upwind there. So, Jenny, we're looking for a very, very busy uh, windward mark by the looks of things. Certainly top uh, three, top four, top five boats very close. Yeah, I think it will be quite a crowded weather mark. It is definitely much colder and slightly windier up here at the top marks. There's a tiny bit of cloud cover that's just come in above us, and I think that's why we're seeing this big right shift and this big pressure line here, and it's absolutely full hiking on all the boats now you can see everyone except for the main trimmer and the helmsman leaned over the side giving it their all uh, if we remember yesterday in one of the races it was a little incident between allegre and apologies i'm blanking on the name andy who who did they hit yesterday ron that? racing ron racing yeah and ron's um ron's back right starboard stanchion broke off and it meant essentially that they couldn't hike that they that they weren't able to pull against the lifelines like this and then they thought they fixed it on the downwind and on the second upwind they had they basically had a tack and went out to starboard and went to hike and they all kind of fell in the water and they had to pull two guys out from from falling in the water so very important to actually have your lifelines holding you in here that's what they're all hiking over and you can see even on board Brennanisek right now they're just trying to hold off sled so the guys on Brennanisek are full arms out over their heads really trying to keep this weather distance from sled sled of course trying to just pinch off Brennanisek because I believe both boats probably are ley line to this top mark although it's a little bit hard to tell maybe they'll have to do one more tiny double tack at the top, but I think that's the fight between Brennan a second sled. I don't think Quantum will get a piece of them if those two boats tack at the end, but I do then think it'll be a very, very close battle for fourth place when they come into the top. So a surprising thing to see here is Azura actually falling back quite a bit into the fleet. They looked very good off that starting line, tacked uh, up on the left side, and they just got caught in between that left shear that Prevetza and Gladiator were able to make some gains in and the right shift that, that, that uh, put Brennan a sec and uh, sled ahead of the rest. So tough, tough calls on that upwind for the tacticians. Um, you know, not surprising to see a lot of the boats come in close. The guys that started ahead and weren't able to make it all the way to the right, actually falling back into the to the boats that were that started a little bit farther behind. So we'll be interesting in in this top mark. Sled looks like they might be laying on the virtual. I don't know what you're seeing out there, but uh, if they do, they should squeak in front of Brennanisek there. Uh, sets will be will be interesting. We'll see. We'll probably see some some drive sets here. Um, so we'll see something very similar to the last race. The right side seeming to be uh, a little bit better over there. It looks like more pressure and a little bit of a better shift. So, How's that ley line looking for uh, between Sled and Brennanisek, Jen? I think they absolutely have it. They're at least squeezing it off at the end. But Sled very, very tight on it. So 
As you're saying, yes, they should be able to lay inside and lead around this mark. They're only two boat lengths now, but I think Fernandesek is so bow forward. They're about half a boat length bow forward. It's going to make this a really, really tight battle. So as they're rounding the mark here, it is sled, the white hulled boat on the inside, bearing away Fernandesek, however, the blue boat over the top of sled. The question between the two, who's going to actually be leading at the offset mark? And of course, sled on the inside they will be leading but will they be able to hold it off will they be able to hold off the charge from Brennanisek or will they maybe slightly luff them here as they round the marks then yes of course coming around with the bright green stripes that's quantum racing in third they've had as we said a tougher got us so far with the four four six five but quantum racing in third and yeah you said terry likes as long as they're top four those are solid, consistent results for them. Sled having a little bit of an issue with their kite here. They are absolutely going for a jibe set. They're only pulling the kite around right now, whereas Brennanisek going for a straight set. It makes sense considering how set up they were. Quantum in third. Oh, no. Behind Quantum in fourth is Platoon. Platoon with a great windward race there coming out to the right, gaining advantage just on the final right and in front of Ron Racing and fifth. So from the front back, it was Sled rounding in first. It was Brennanis at Gazprom rounding second. Quantum Racing rounding third. Now in fourth around the offset mark, Platoon. Fifth place, Ron Racing. Sixth place, Gladiator with the red T-shirts. And then a really close fight for seventh between Provetza and I believe Azura. And eighth place, Allegre. Um, Possibly I missed a boat there because there should be nine. So you guys let me know yes. who's the ninth place or did I miss one? <laughs> Sled, Berenicek, Quantum, Platoon, Ran, Gladiator, Provetsa, Azura, and Allegro. Excellent. You can see so far every boat has jive set bar one. Brennanisek, who had rounded so high outside of Sled, has just gone out to the right-hand side, jibing now. But the entire rest of the pack has jive set. Gladiator seems to be struggling to get their red kite fill, in fact, they still don't have it full around, and they might even get rolled by the Italians, but now it's just starting to fill on Gladiator, the red kite, while Prevetza goes straight. So the two boats not to jive set, Brunetta set Gazprom and Prevetza. The entire rest of the fleet now has jived. Yeah, and uh, again, not surprising to see that happen. Uh, here at the studio, we are seeing a pretty big puff from a very right direction, so it'll be uh, a lot of port jive on this downwind if you guys do see that breeze direction start coming in and a little bit more pressure than what uh, the boats have been experiencing recently. So might see some jib changes on the downwind here. Um, definitely going to see a big fight for the, for the uh, left-hand gate looking downwind, that ley line down there, very similar to what we saw in the previous race. It's looking like a gain to quantum racing in the meantime. Berenicek out to the right, looking a little bit exposed, perhaps. It's a good or a bad thing there, Berenicek. I mean, last race, they made a gain doing that. The yeah. entire fleet came this way, and their, their breeze of the whole fleet, they kind of got congested with each other. Berenicek went from something deeper down the pack, something like sixth or seventh, up to more like fourth position. So I think this time they were absolutely forced that way because they were high mode. They couldn't really jive with sled. They had to go straight a bit further. But um, it'll be interesting to see, yeah, whether they're exposed and they're further away from this pressure out on this right side of the race course, left side looking downwind, or whether they might just be able to keep their own breeze clear while the rest of these guys fight with each other and they'll keep that... Um, well, the question is, will they keep that second position or will they lose to Quantum? Yeah, I think that uh, it's actually a pretty strong spot for them to be, especially if the breeze continues to go a little bit more right in direction. If they can stay in the pressure on that side, um, as they all get headed, they're actually going to get clear and clear air in front of the fleet there. So it could actually end up being a really strong move for them. Um, like how I like how far down they went before driving underneath the fleet. Um, so we'll see. They could actually end up gaining quite a bit from there. Meantime, Jen, Virtual shows uh, a four-place gain to Azura just now. Don't know whether that will stick uh, once we get down the run, but uh, they've gone up from uh, eighth to fourth, plus or minus one. Uh, to Azura, no, t to my eye, it's Sled Quantum, yeah. Fernandesek, Platoon, Ron, and Azura's behind Ron. So 
Uh, I'm not sure that's just a little glitch in the tracker. Yeah. They're definitely um, two boat lengths back of Ron, but they are leading Gladiator and Allegra. So a little tight battle there between those three boats. But uh, so uh, it's you're right. we just, back of the pack. We just lost sled for momentarily. Yeah, so everything working again on the on the virtual eye here. So you see sled in first, Quantum Racing in second, Brennanisek pushing for second place there down on the bottom uh, in third, Platoon in fourth, Ran in fifth, and Azura passing one boat in Gladiator uh, around the offset mark there as Gladiator had a couple of issues with their kite. Um, so again, both pretty close still on this downwind. You'll see them again go all the way to that uh, to that lay line down there, most likely for the left hand gate. And you'll see a whole lot of action down there as everybody starts to jibe on each other on starboard. You'll see the guys behind most likely jibing a little bit earlier than those in front, trying to get out in front of them and be on their breeze. Um, so it's all about setup here. It's all about how low you can soak your boat. So you're going you're to try and get that pressure and take it down as soon as you can. Then you get that lane on starboard to get into the, into the bottom marks there. You know, it's interesting here. Sled and Quantum sailing their body weight quite differently on this downwind sled. You can even see from afar slightly more bow up every now and then there's even some air between their bow and the waves, whereas Quantum has two, maybe three bodies on the bow forward of the mast. Um, sled has everyone on board, mast or aft. So sailing the boats quite differently on the downwind. And I think Quantum looks to me to be the faster boat. I think they've closed this gap so far over the, over the distance of the race course. Yeah, there's definitely a difference you can see on the video here. Uh, sled for sure, a little bit farther back. Maybe they're just kind of expecting the uh, the waves to have a little bit more of a problem with them. But we see Quantum gaining quite a bit on the virtual. I, I would imagine if they continue to gain, they're going to take some of that gain into a low mode and then maybe drive early. Um, Brennanisek is not making the gains that I initially thought they might have been making. Must be more pressure up high, uh, which is would explain why a lot of the boats are in a little bit of a high mode right now. Um, higher than you would expect them to be sailing in this kind of breeze. Meanwhile, we just mentioned one tracker issue, issue earlier where we didn't see sled for half a second. And apologies to the entire audience that was watching yesterday. We kept losing the overall leaders, Ron Racing, of who course. had been second in the race course. But we couldn't figure out what it was. Nobody on our side knew. Nobody in New Zealand who deals with virtual eye knew. And it was, as we said, the stanchion being broken off the back of their stern. That was the problem because they had broken the stanchion off. They had then thrown it down below. And so every now and then their tracker would let us know where it was. But it it wasn't there the whole time and so that wasn't actually anyone's fault you guys except for maybe the um the boat that they collided with Allegra. But, uh, apologies you blame Allegra. yeah so <laughs> you're seeing you're seeing sled here jive early quantum deciding not to jive on top that's probably because they think that sled has jived too early um so they're going to try and get this bottom side and maybe get inside on that left gate quantum definitely showing they want the left gate looking downwind and Brennanisek actually coming back quite a bit they did yeah. make those gains that we talked about earlier uh, they're not going to be quite crossing Quantum, so they're going to either jibe on top. Here they go for the jibe. You'll probably see Quantum jibe away here yeah, if they top. like that uh, that left-hand side looking down one a little bit more. Um, so they'll, unless they're on ley line, you'll see them most likely jibe away, or if they can get some breeze out in the front and have clear air there, which might look like Brennanisek didn't have the greatest jibe ever. They look they like their spinnaker is still luffing. Um, so Quantum able to get out in front, so they'll probably stay there. That is where they chose to be in the beginning. Um, and we'll look for them to fight a little bit for that left mark for sure. Quantum showing that they want to be on that right side looking upwind and they go around those lure gate marks. Yeah, I think for Nenesek, unfortunately, they're just a little late on the trim of the spinnaker. So you could see the kite, they jive outside and it and it wasn't trimmed uh, early enough. So instead of being able to accelerate right away, as you said, it just continued luffing while they tried to then trim that sheet. And maybe they were rushed on the jive. Maybe they hadn't made the call early they thought they were crossing quantum and instead they were late to set up so i think just now finally getting it under control but i do think quantum might have been able to sneak out the front of them although as we get closer i'm not sure possibly brendan Asek has a little piece of quantum it looks like quantum heading up to defend their breeze and that i'm not sure they'll be able to they might be being rolled at the moment by brendan Asek. so brendan Asek doing a good job here to try to defend what had been a second place position around the top marks 
Yeah, so we see Ran again. We're on we're on board Ran, but they look like on the virtual eye, like they've gone pretty deep in the box, like they did in the last race. So that was what caused them to lose so many boats in the last race. Uh, they're pretty deep on the ley lines. They might have overlaid by a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure that the rest of the boats are close enough to make such a big effect on their result like they were in the last race. Um, but it's certainly dangerous for them to be down there. They must really like that left-hand gate looking downwind. Um, as for the rest of the boats, a little bit more spread out than what we thought uh, was going to happen and certainly than what we saw in the last race. Azura on that right side looking downwind, so maybe, maybe liking the other gate, uh, Gladiator, up there with them. So we're not really sure how they're going to end up here, but... I would imagine that if uh, Gladiator and Azura decided to jive onto port now, they could make it really hard on Ren Racing, Provetza, and Allegra that are down there. Um, as for the top four boats, Sled, Quantum, Brennanasek, and Platoon. Platoon's going to be rounding whichever gate is less crowded, I would imagine. Um, Sled going to decide which way they want to go on the upwind. And Quantum and Brennanasek are going to be in a fight for whichever side they want to be able to get off to on the upwind there. I think this is a tough spot for Quantum Racing. They've they've almost just been rolled by Brennanasek, but they have a bit further to go on this starboard jive before they can then jive for the mark. So they're having to just hang there right now. They, If they were to sacrifice two jives early here, they'd be doing two extra jives. They'd rather just hang till they get into that little lovely triangle of jiving for the left mark or sailing straight, and I think they're having to suffer for it just barely as Brennanasek rolls over the top. But there is almost enough breeze that the suffering isn't too bad it's not like when it's really light air they haven't actually lost their kite or collapsed it at all they've just borne away a little bit gone for a deeper angle and tried to fill from behind and it looks like it's working they're not gonna have to jive away yeah well either way big loss for quantum there they jived they they crossed sled as as sled jived first and uh jived underneath them expecting that sled had had uh jived a little bit too early and now you see that they're actually above the line of sled so they had to come up quite a bit to defend uh, from Brennanasek's jive, even though Brennanasek's jive was not quite the perfect jive there. So still a big loss, still great for Sled to get out in front. They're going to be pretty happy with that, just like they were in the last race. They realize, you know, once you get out decently far in front and you know which side of the course is favored, then you can keep extending that lead. So they're going to be very happy here um, with, the, with this mark rounding that they've got going here. So we wouldn't be surprised. Quantum actually ended up defending pretty well on Brennanasek if that uh, starboard gate on the upwind, they, they want to go to the right side there, so they've actually gotten what they wanted there. So, Jen, just talk us through this uh, this rounding. Yeah, that was sled around the bottom marks to the right. Sled again, winners of the last race, winning again this race. Brennanasek rounding to the left. Quantum almost simultaneously rounding to the right here. So, first, second, third through the gates, then fourth place, platoon. Bow number 12 just dropping the kite, rounding to the right. They will be on the stern of Quantum just behind them. Ran Racing, overall leaders. A little bit early with a kite drop there, actually. I think they've chosen to go to the opposite mark from the course that I'm on to go right turn to the left side to be rounding behind Brennanasek. So I think a little early of a call on a, on a kite drop if you're going to go the extra two boat lengths. Behind Ron Racing, Azura, the Italian team who currently lead the series overall. Behind Azura, Provetza, actually a really late Spinnaker drop, just dropping the kite as they round the bottom marks there. Um, but a nice gain on the far side, just rounding at the same time as Provetza Gladiator. So that is eighth place for Gladiator and Coming in to the rear again, unfortunately, after the last race, is Allegra, the British flag team. So very impressive second race here, I think, for SLED to take two bullets in one day. Well, the race isn't over yet, but they are definitely leading at the current moment. Indeed, I think they perhaps heard uh, Nick saying earlier on that uh, the top team was going to be platoon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I'll give, you, I'll give you credit on that one, Andy. You said, I don't know, Sled could pull out two first. No, so probably I mean, all I, of us were going, well, that was I, a difficult task. But so often it's about confidence, and if you can win one race it's, uh, and get a good start off the line. I mean, they've done pretty much the same as they did. I mean, as Nick pointed out, they, they positioned themselves much the same as they did. They sailed the first beat much the same as they did, and uh, the, uh, the results so far is much the same as the, the previous race. Yeah, they've done a much better job of calling the ley lines yeah, here yeah. and uh, picking the right spots, getting a little bit away from the fleet but still being on the correct side of the race course. So very smart sailing by the sled team there uh, throughout this race. And they've tacked up the right-hand side here. I think they were the last, actually, of the first three to tack up from the right, but it looks like they've made gains already on Quantum Racing and for Nenesek. And definitely out here on the right where we are on the camera boat, much better breeze, even better breeze than the original first upwind of this race. So while I didn't see any jibs 
changed on that downwind. I'm pretty sure they're not. There weren't any changes. Um, really going to be those changes here to be sailing into more reefs because now we probably have 12, 13 knots at least. It's, it's starting to white cap out here. Yeah, not not surprising. Like I said, we got that big puff a couple of minutes ago. It looks like it's still pretty pretty windy from this right side here. So uh, a lot of going to be a lot of right shift most likely, and a lot of pressure on that side. So we'll we'll look to see those boats that are edging towards the right side of the race course are going to make some gains, I would imagine. Um, but also at the same time, not as much of a one-sided course as we saw in the first race, at least. From the perspective of the of the boats that are racing, a lot of a lot of boats electing to go to the uh, opposite gate and sort of start sailing towards the left side. Quantum tacked onto port and uh, has actually decided to go back on the starboard now and get away. And it might have been uh, because Quantum sled hit on top just, of them there, but yeah, Quantum was face landed by sled, so they've just done a clearing double tack here. Okay. But the boat that has definitely chosen to go to the left, both at the bottom marks and continuing now up the race courses for Nenesek. So that's the surprising decision by Ray Davies on board for Nenesek. They are attacking now as we speak, though, to come out to the right. But we'll have to see if that's a gain or a loss that's between it. them and Quantum. Are we seeing a bit of a lefty out in the left side of the course, perhaps? Or is that... You know, we saw a lefty early on as well on that first upwind. I remember you guys calling the lefty on the virtual eye. It was difficult to my eye to see it from so far away. But I think it would make sense early on in this race course. You're still possibly affected a little tiny bit by, by land, whereas further up towards the top marks, we're absolutely out in the middle of the bay and there's open ocean in front of us. So if there's any chance of a left shift from Cabo Blanco, it would be early on on the bottom left. And I think that's why we've seen both Brennanisek and is that Azura? Oh no, Azura is just in front of me. So I can't I can't tell the boat that's further out there. I can't see the colors from here. Maybe it's Ron Racing. Ron Racing, Ron racing. I mean, Ron Racing seemed to be sailing one tack on, uh, on the left side of the track and are lifted uh, or have been lifted quite substantially. Well, yeah, so the virtual eye has Rant Racing in first right now. I think it's a little bit off with the breeze direction. You can see how the ley lines to the bottom gate were a little bit a little bit off as well. So I actually would imagine that they are somewhere around mid-fleet. Our real race leaders are Sled. Fernanda second, Quantum are probably close to second and third there, and Ren either fourth or fifth overall, even though the, uh, the virtual eye has them in first right now. I do think Ron Racing probably the most comfortable with that left-hand side of this race course. I mean, we did see them the first three races of this regatta lead. Well, they didn't lead every race. They led the first race, and they were second, the second two. But they were always the team out on the left. In fact, one of the races where they got second to Allegre, they had basically been far left, Allegre far right, and they had come together in the middle perfectly even. And, and I think Ron Racing always quite comfortable out of that left-hand side. Whereas we are on the far right, just seeing Provetza, the furthest right boat, tacking now. And it's Quantum Racing just taking the stern of Sled, about three boat length lead, at least between Sled and Quantum. Um, we'll see how they come together when they come together with Ron Racing on the far side. Yeah, Virtual Eye has Sled, sled leading now. It's a little bit, little bit better there. It does look like Ren's made quite a bit of a gain. You can see that, that bend up the left side there. Uh, definitely a left shift. Uh, definitely a little bit of gain for those guys out there, but we'll see if it lasts the right side. Uh, made a pretty big gain last time, but that was because of a, of a fairly major shift, and that shift has not seemed to come into to play here, but I would imagine there's some more pressure out there helping those boats. And what do you see on the race course? Yeah, we do. We have a really nice pressure on the right-hand side. Um, a lot of little battles here. I mean, Platoon's just tacked, forcing Azura to tack. Quantum now facing Platoon. I think probably Platoon will have to decide to come back because they've basically been perfectly faced by Quantum to windward and in front of them. Um, they're not attacking back just yet, but they're either going to go into foot mode or come back soon, whereas Azura has just done a very small two boat length hitch out to the right, forced by Platoon to go out right. They've now come out just above Quantum's line, but tacking on Provetza's line, and instantly you see Provetza ease the main and go into foot mode. Um, deciding not to take two more attacks. And then Sled, of course, coming up and hitching now onto Quantum. So a lot of little battles with a lot of guys just defending in front of them, trying to take, I think, what's currently a right-hand shift. So they all want to take the starboard while they can, but they're needing to have to do little port tacks out to clear their air. And as I say that, Platoon just taking a little hitch out as well. Still just watching uh, Run Racing coming across, uh, converging with Brenner. So they didn't look too bad, Nick. 
Yeah, they actually ended up better than I than I would have imagined. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of left pressure out there. You saw they they tacked on a nice nice port lift and have carried it across. Uh, you see Gladiator out there attacking underneath. They mm. seem to have not not liked with the position that they were crossing back in. That's why they're attacking back. Um, Ran Racing though definitely it's close. close yeah. I'll bet that they have made most of their gains not from the wind shift, but from those little battles that you're talking about out there. A lot of lot of tacks coming yeah. from those boats. Um, tacks are not fast, and Rand has only done one of those. Um, so they are gaining a lot uh, just by sailing faster at the whole race course and letting the other guys mess around with each other. One more time, Platoon, they're facing Azura. Azura having to tack off again. So I think if I can count it, that's probably four for Azura just in the last two minutes, unfortunately. Ron Racing still on port, though, coming through the pack here, and they are just tacking underneath the pack at the current moment. Brennanisek continuing through as well. I think Brennanisek has made big losses here to both Quantum and Platoon, in fact, maybe even to Zura. They were in second rounding the marks. They were tied. They probably rounded three seconds ahead of Quantum, actually, choosing that left-hand side, that, that right-hand mark, right turn on the downwind, going to the left side, and I think that's slightly a disadvantage to them coming back now. Yeah, for sure. We saw them tack right away after that mark, knowing that the right side was going to be a little bit better. But just as you can see with all those fights going on out there, it's so important to have your lane and be able to tack back, start heading towards the, the mark when you get that big righty without anybody in your face. So Sled and Quantum getting a little bit of a fight that Quantum then ends up getting in a fight with Platoon, who then ends up getting in a fight with Azura yeah. and yeah. Brennanisek <laughs> on the wrong side of a lot of those fights just being under, just underneath those boats, uh, for sure losing from uh, not being on the right side enough, but also losing from just being a little bit of bad air for a lot of that upwind. You know, the interesting part as well is that with these little battles is they clearly think it's a right shift now and it's not gonna go further right. And that's why they're only taking these two boat length hitches and then they're getting back onto starboard tack. Whereas if you think, all right, it's a right shift now, but it might go, go even away. further, then yeah, you'd be happy to go to the ley line. And none of these boats are ley line yet. So interesting that they're all, that they're all hedging bets that the left might come back a little bit and then of course as i say that brennanisek charging out here to the far right side so maybe brennanisek's gone okay fine it's gonna go right it's gonna go for the right yeah especially for the guys that are behind you're not surprised that they go just a little bit longer and tack back they're hoping to get that clear lane they know that if they go all the way to ley line then they're definitely going to be in bad air for the majority of the rest of the leg so having them tack a little bit underneath ley line and hoping the boats that are ahead of them will just cross and go all the way ley line give them some clear air is, is their best bet um the sled just doing the smart thing here though and just charging away going fast knowing that the other boats are going to mess around with each other it's exactly what they did in the last race um, I would not be surprised to see them have a little bit more of a lead at the top mark than they had at the bottom. Yeah, I think they've already extended here over Quantum Racing by about six, seven, maybe eight boat lengths. Um, Brennanisek had ducked Quantum. They've come out to the right here, and I think in this next cross, it doesn't look nearly so obvious that Quantum has a clear cross. So I think the right side is paying pretty nicely still, surprisingly. Um, it's a little, yeah, Quantum going into a, an early lay bow, so I don't think that they thought they had the cross. I think sometimes as well, this is like a fleet mentality where you could say, sure, I'll just send it out to the right ley line, but that's a danger, dangerous call. If you have a bigger right shift, then you overstand by a lot. If you have any sort of a left shift, you also lose to the guys who are to your left. So these little tiny battles that we're seeing, they're a conservative move by a lot of the fleet, which is surprising. We don't see that this often, this much on a second upwind of a race. Yeah, very exciting on this upwind for sure. A lot of lot of uh, fighting for the few lanes that they've had on the race course that the boats have all been fighting for that same uh, long starboard tack with the big right shifts that are coming. Brennanisek making a pretty good gain out there on the right sled actually having to come in and tack in front of them. Uh, looks like they might have passed Quantum here. That's what we're seeing on the virtual eye. I don't know what you guys are seeing out there. Uh, we are a little bit behind you um, where there's a slight bit of lag, so we can't quite... Uh, match the timing but it does look like Brennanisek's past quantum here looks like sled and Brennanisek probably on ley line so uh, they might be one and two around that mark and the fight will be with a couple of boats behind them i i think it might be too early to call this ley line at least for sled perhaps they're gonna have to do two more attacks at the current moment it looks like they would at least be able to double tack up to Brennanisek's lee bow so i think 
if they think early enough, for sure we're not going to make it. You should expect them to place those two tacks. So they're giving Brnanisek bad air for the longest period of time. However, if they think they are going to lay the ley line and they could just squeeze it at the end, then no reason to do the two tacks too early. Otherwise, you're just wasting tacks. So I think the fact that they're holding on means they might think they still have a tiny bit more right shift to come, so they're not going to sacrifice those tacks early. Otherwise, perhaps they think Brnetisek's gaining so much they might not even have a Libao on them, um, whereas Sled easily leads from Quantum now. Brnetisek, having just taken that extra five boat lengths of leverage out to the right, really looks like they made some massive gains um, doing so, not doing those little two boat length hitches we were talking about the rest of the pack doing. It's certainly... Sled's, uh, sled's line showed them uh, progressively lifting and now just the bows come down very slightly in the last uh, few seconds. Yeah, Virtual has them being pretty close to the ley line here. Um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Brennanisek taking that a little bit farther to the right there, um, gaining quite a bit. Quantum making huge losses uh, to those look first the, two Look at boats. the convergence of, this, of the lines between Quantum uh, and, uh, and Sled. Yeah, they've, they've separated quite a bit. looks like a little bit of right shear up there. Azura making big gains from that. Um, I'm sure Quantum's not going to be happy about that. Ran Racing coming back in here. Coming close to ley line, so Platoon and Quantum and Ran Racing and Azura all will be rounding very close to each other um, in a big right shift here. Quantum getting headed just now. Going to go for the tack. Um, but we'll, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens on the downwind. There won't be a whole lot of lanes uh, to just sail on port tack and jibe set right away. So we might see some, some boats straight set and some jibe right away. And then the sides will des determine who wins. So Jenny, talk us around the uh, last windward mark of the day probably with the uh, sled leading. Yeah, so you could just see Sled, the white bow, that's Bow and Brad Marsh out at the front getting their spinnaker out and ready. And I think we have seen them jibe set every, every, uh, we've just got, sorry, change of course here. You can hear the horns to our right. Change of the course of the bottom mark to zero five five degrees. So setting up for that right shift while Sled is leading behind them. It's Brennanisek, the blue boat, the Russian team in second place. Then in third place, Quantum Racing just able to make that double tack up to the ley line and hold off for third. In fourth position, a very tight battle between Ron Racing, bow number three, you can just see sticking out the front over Platoon with the red sail numbers, the German boat. So I think Platoon might even just go for an extra, yeah, an extra little luff there of Ron Racing and then they'll bear away here. But they're trying to hold the role of Ron Racing, those two boats fighting for that fourth position just behind them in fifth place the italian team of azura the dark blue hulls then in sixth position bow number nine prevetza in seventh place gladiator with the red t-shirts sorry again i've lost i've lost one in my mind it's eighth place gladiator the red t-shirts and ninth place allegre so that was first place to said second place to Brennanisek, third place to Quantum, fourth to Platoon, fifth to Ron Racing, sixth to Azura, who is wildly waving their flag right now, protesting Ron Racing, calling for room at this offset mark. And you can see Vasco Boscoto so fired up in the back of the in the back of the boat there, flagging that red protest flag towards Ron Racing and yelling at the umpires who have green flagged the scenario. <laughs> then in seventh place, Brabetza, eighth Gladiator, and ninth Allegre. Vasco's face the same color as the flag, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Yeah, so like we were talking about, you see a couple of boats straight setting here as well as a couple uh, jibe setting just because of the congestion at the mark. Ran Racing and Brennanisek out there are still on starboard jibe. Uh, we'll see how that works out for them. Brennanisek uh, making some gains actually by straight setting on the last leg and, and coming in underneath. Um, but the rest of the guys definitely joining the march out there to the right side on port jibe there. So they made that change of course, so what does it look like? Is it still so much of a port jibe on the downwind like it was in the last leg, or what do you see? Well, they've just changed the marks to the to the downwind mark. So they've set it for a 055 bottom mark. I can't actually see the bottom mark at the current moment, but it should be more square. I think that right shift had come through before they made the change, so they've squared to the new right pressure, which means for Denisek, as you said, they're... They were happy last time to go straight and then jibe. They're happy this time again. Last time they had been forced that way. This time I think they decided on purpose to go that way. So while last time they actually made a slight loss to Quantum, 
in this scenario. I think this time they, they're assuming toward the finish line, it's a little bit different. You then get to come in to the finish, pick your side, which you think's favored on the line. And I think for now, it looks like they're doing okay out there. It looks like the breeze has at least filtered towards that, that bright blue boat. But I'm now out on the side just near Azura and Platoon. We're racing down towards the leaders and the rest of the pack on this side, pretty much a parade. Nobody's fighting to get high in this breeze. There's plenty of breeze to sail the boats a little bit lower. Yeah, Pruninasek showing up on the virtual just very slightly quicker than Sled to their left. Yeah, the virtual is showing a couple of the, those Titus three boats there going a little bit higher, so we might might see Gladiator and uh, Allegra make some gains there if they can get a drive off early and get in front of those boats. Uh, will depend on the shifts and the pressure behind them for sure. And uh, yeah, Brennanisek as well, a uh, little bit of a risk there, but it makes sense for them. Um, they were, them and Sled rounded quite a bit of, uh, ahead of everybody else, so they had some room to play with. They're allowed to take some risk there um, and not feel like they have any risk of losing the boats behind them. So they're going to get a little bit of leverage on Sled, see if they can pass them, but not so much that if there was a big shift or a big uh, change in pressure that they would lose the other boats on that side. So very calculated, very smart risk uh, on Brennanisek there. You know, again, we have the different sailing styles on this downwind. We have sled with all their bodies out behind the mast, and then just aft of them, quantum racing. And I remember making the statement on the first downwind, but quantum racing with two bodies forward of the mast, not as many people hiking. So whether they just go for that soak mode earlier, or whether they actually decide with their boat design, they like to sail the boat a bit more bowed down. I think um, that's the case, remembering yeah, what the guys said earlier on the season, they seem to be able to sail uh, a little bit of a lower mode, and that's been uh, something they've worked quite hard on in terms of the uh, sail design. Yeah, in fact, as you look up at their kite, it looks like their kite much more open, much more eased. So the top back corner much more twisted off on board Quantum, whereas on board Sled, the top back corner of their kite much tighter, um, not nearly as much twist. The front of the luff not not uh, flicking nearly as much. So Quantum sailing with a way more eased setup and uh, and trying to take some depth here. Yeah, you're getting to the point where these guys are going to start getting close to ley lines. So you're going to see them try to soak and soak and soak as much as they can so they can get that clear lane back on starboard jive into the finish. That's where the boats will make their gains if they can get uh, catch somebody on a bad jive or catch them maybe overlaying the ley line just a little bit. Um, that's where you'll see boats trying to make their passing moves there. They're all just sort of waiting patiently in line for somebody else to make a mistake right now. So that's what we're waiting for, somebody to make a mistake so that some action can happen right now. It's where Brennanisek in particular could make some moves if Sled comes into this bottom corner a bit too far. Sled, of course, won the first race, but their lead wasn't, was sorry, slightly bigger than this. Their lead a bit smaller on this race. But it would be an amazing day if these guys could take two race wins out here. The first three races of this regatta, they had gotten 8-3-8. Eight, eight. So to go with a 1-1 one, one then um, will be a huge advantage in the day. Yeah, Virtual Eye here saying Quantum actually passing Brennanisek. I'm not sure if the uh, if it's exactly lined up with the shifts here, but it does look like Brennanisek's made a little bit of a loss. Um, wouldn't be surprised if they didn't quite go far enough before driving on the port to get clear of everyone's bad air. Um, but this cross with sled will be very enlightening to see how they've been doing. But all the boats driving now, you see them all driving on each other. Uh, Gladiator and I believe that's Prevetza uh, continuing on, maybe Ran Racing, not sure. Uh, assuming that the other boats have jived a little bit too early, hoping that they'll mess with each other and make a gain on the other side. Brennanisek coming in pretty close here. I wouldn't be surprised if they had to jive on, on Quantum without crossing them, um, but still a pretty strong position for them. Um, so Quantum may be the boat that's going to suffer here if Brennanisek does drive on top. Interesting in general terms, I think uh, sled a little bit of a slow burn season, the, uh, which was quite similar to last year. The uh, last two regattas of last year were their best and were not so good early on and that uh, looking a little bit like a similar pattern this year. 
but it's just so close all the way through the fleet. Uh, it's very, very hard to stay similarly consistent from one regatta to the next. Just watching, yes, as you said, Nick, then uh, Quantum there. Yeah, Can suffering I a little bit. I don't know, uh, we can't see the ley lines here on the uh, coverage or on the uh, virtual eye, but I'm, I'm sure that they're very close to ley line. Wouldn't be surprised to see Quantum driving back soon here, but Brennanisek making good gains. Uh, but also the rest of the fleet making good gains on the leaders, so it'll be a lot closer here than we originally thought uh, coming into the finish. Yeah, Brennanisek with a with a really big gain out on that right hand side on the downwind to sled. So they came in, they jived. They had a better jive than last time where they had their kite sheet trimmed too late. This time they they trimmed perfectly on time, forced Quantum instantly into a jive away. But Quantum still yet to jive back. They're not. They're not thinking they're on ley line yet, and I think that's probably correct. Looking at the finish line, we've still probably got um, 20 boat lengths to go, maybe 10 boat lengths to go on port tack before needing to have to jive for that pin in ley line. And, of course, you can decide to jive to whichever ley line you think is closer. From here, here a, bit a bit too hard, hard to tell still, although maybe it is the pin, the white mark, um, looking closer, I think, than the finish line boat. So we could see them all going for the pin end of the line. Quantum has just jived there. Um, and yet, Sled and Brennanisek, slightly less of a battle. Brennanisek fell back a little bit to Sled there. Yeah, but still a dangerous place for Quantum as we see them sort of down in the box here. The platoon and Brennanisek or Sled, if any of them decide to jibe and sort of put another jibe in front of Quantum, there's not really anywhere anywhere else for them to go. So they went and, and hit Prevetsa there and are in front of Azura, defending a couple of boats there, confident in being ahead of Gladiator and Allegra, but um, definitely at risk of losing a couple of boats that are up uh, to windward of them and in front if they do decide to jive back and hit them. Um, but yeah, if the pin end is favored, you probably won't see that happen, um, but maybe still losing a boat or two there just from the, the line bias. Uh, but if the pin's favored, it'll be, a, it'll be a good fight with the top four boats uh, to see if they can get inside inside uh, overlap there and get some room at the pin end. Um, a lot of people are going to be driving a whole lot of times, most likely at the finish as we come up to that. I think Quantum in a tricky spot as well because, as you said, they're in this bottom corner. They can't really jibe away anymore. They're too close to the ley lines. And yet Azura planted a jibe in the middle of the course that's almost perfectly lined up with Quantum's with Quantum Spree. So Azura thinking about overall season rivalry here, I think. And it's just windy enough that that seven boat length distance might be just enough that Azura is not giving them too much bad air. But I think it's a difficult task for Quantum to hang there. They've got Prevetsa behind them, so they can't bear away too deep. And they've got Azura just to weather of them, so their their window quite small as they're racing downwind. But they, they seem to be okay. There's no problems with their spinnaker, really, and they're going quite fast. And in fact, maybe they're going even a bit faster than Sled and Brennanisek on the far side. Yeah, Virtual is showing them gaining a little bit of distance on them. Uh, definitely more of a pack over there. Um, Brennanisek looks like they're driving now, but could be in danger. Um, sort of depends on who's going to end up a little bit ahead on the crosses. Uh, Quantum, though, definitely making a gain. We wouldn't be uh, too, too surprised to see them drive in front of, uh, of Brennanisek if they do make that cross, um, but for sure getting hurt by the groups around them, both those boats um, under pressure from the boats behind. So Sled and Brennanisek have both jived back now. Sled definitely still maintaining probably a three-boat length lead over Brennanisek. Quantum coming in from this right-hand side looking upwind on the race course. Uh, I don't know, to me it looks close, but I think Sled still has it. Is that what you guys are seeing on virtual? At the moment, yes. Very, very close, and also with the Brenner set quantum, really next to nothing in it. Yeah, the closest cross here will be uh, Platoon out there on the left side looking at the virtual, and Prevetsa on our right side. Those will be the closest boats um, coming into the finish here, so that'll be an interesting uh, thing to see. You might either see Prevetsa driving in front of Platoon, trying to cover their breeze, or you might see them try to pin, uh, make make, make uh, Platoon jive onto starboard and overlay the ley line a little bit. And there you see Quantum going across the front of uh, Brennanisek. Literally just threading the needle, just behind Sled, just in front of Brennanisek, and I think that's probably the perfect spot for, for Quantum to cross through. Sled jiving here towards the finish line. Brennanisek will follow behind, but Platoon bearing away, really good breeze on Platoon, bearing away to 
try to get a piece, as you said, of Prevetsa, or try to get across the bows of Prevetsa. Sled has jibed. Not an amazing jibe for Sled. Um, we're going to just, we're sitting right on the line here to try to make the call for you guys. But I think it is Sled. Yes, bow number six just has pulled into Quantum's bow, bow number six. Sled taking their second bullet of today. An amazing job for Sled. And Quantum ripping into the finish line in second there. As we said, the pen is favored. So Quantum and Platoon just nipping Bernanasek. Second and third. Bernanasek will be fourth. And Prevetsa fifth. Now Ron racing dropping in in sixth and behind them Azura in seventh and of course the umpires with the green flag right next to Azura. I'm not sure who was flagging whom but the umpires have greened it. Eighth place still a tight fight here for Allegre and Gladiator and I think Allegre coming in with speed whereas Gladiator has just jived means Allegre is going to take this eighth position but it is still a question mark. They need to bear away here. They are bearing away to the finish and Allegre is just nipped Gladiator, sorry for you, Nick. Not a good day for your father on board that boat, but an amazing day for SLED, I think. You've got to hand it to them. Hamish Pepper and Cameron Dunn calling amazing job on, on strategy and tactics, as well as the navigator, Andrea Vicentini, and, of course, the helmsman and owner, Takashi Okura, taking two wins on the day and an awesome job. Yeah, really great positioning on SLED there. They did a great job. Sort of, They didn't have the best start in either race. Uh, they definitely didn't have the best spot on the upwinds in either race either, but they put themselves in a really great place uh, to take advantage of the right-hand shift and the right-hand pressure that we saw on the race course, but also not to overlay and also not to get involved in those little fights that we saw for positioning on the right side. So very smart by them to sort of stay away from the fleet but make sure that they're still in the, the greatest part of the advantage on the right side. So... Yeah, impressive sailing for them. Uh, really, really good tactics and really good strategy calls on that boat for sure. A um, couple other boats that did well today. Platoon making good gains through the fleet. Uh, again, you just saw them gain two, two boats and there. Two to three for the day. At the, uh, yeah, two, gaining two boats at the bottom there uh, just at the finish. So great for them to be able to so, sort of round the marks, um, around the top mark, the first mark, a little bit behind and made some gains throughout the day. So they'll be happy with their speed um, and their boat handling and they come in for the rest of the day. Uh, Brennanasek having a decent day as well. Prevetsa sort of up and down, taking a lot of risks. You saw them all the way out on the right side in the first race and then all the way on the left side in the second race. So uh, interesting that they've finished mid-fleet for taking a lot of risk. Um, and Ren Racing actually having a surprising day after a very dominant performance in the first couple of days here. Um, we're doing very well in the first race, made a couple of mistakes that cost them quite a few points, um, and now we're just sort of averaged throughout the whole, uh, the whole race there. And... Um, but look, at the, look at the points table, there's nothing in it really. Yeah. So 19 points now for uh, Quantum Racing, uh, Sled 21, and uh, also Quantum but on 21 points as well. Yeah, so so we see the, the results after today will be, so Ran Racing is still out ahead by two points, but you know, six points in between first and seventh place. Uh, Gladiator and Allegra a little bit behind the curve there, but Certainly, the top seven boats are very much in contention to win the event, and we are. It's not amazing even when you when you say through. that, isn't it? The top seven <laughs> boats of nine are in contention to win the regatta. Yeah. Jenny, it's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> Those are stats I absolutely <laughs> like to hear. I mean, we know that eight of these nine. What does that mean about the bottom two? <laughs> yeah, I think the bottom two are going to be upset by that. But we just but got uh, a thumbs up from Sled there. I hope you guys caught that one. That. They're happy on board. Absolutely. But I mean, to go 838-11, you know, a great day for them. It can happen to anyone. You know, we say anybody in this in this fleet can win uh, win races and sled proving that today with a, a double win uh, and a pretty solid day, as you said, uh, for Platoon. 2-3, 4-4 for uh, Baranasek and uh, Quantum Racing 5-2, seven points from the day. Uh, you know, Terry says any day that you're inside, uh, uh, you know, inside your four points per race or better, then uh, that's a pretty good day. So there you go, there's the, uh, the table, the standings as we reach the halfway point of this regatta. We'll do, hopefully do 10 races, that's race number five gone. So ra ran racing on 19, sled 21, quantum racing on 21, Prevetsa 22, platoon 22, Azura 24, Brunanasek 25, a Gladiator on 35 and uh, Allegri on uh, 36. So a good day's racing, a nice uh, sea breeze conditions uh, and uh, a pretty uh, pretty solid performance uh, all round then from uh, Sled with their two wins. Can they, can, they, uh, can they carry on tomorrow, do you think, Jen? 
I think this is the kind of momentum you want to carry on, but the sort of momentum that a whole night and a morning can, can absolutely um, mess up. And I think we don't quite know what the, what the situation will be like for the breeze tomorrow. It's been really strange so far in the racing here. We haven't actually ever really seen the typical Palma sea breeze over the last three days, and yet all these guys know how to sail on the Bay of Palma, but they're saying they don't know necessarily how to sail in this. So I think tomorrow it'll be anyone's game, and if it turns back into a left-hand side race course, we might see Ron Racing start to step up their game again today. I think they just weren't as comfortable starting from the boat and instead sled, nailing those boat hand starts and then getting easily what they wanted in the middle of the race course when they wanted it. So an amazing job to these guys, huge credit to them, and I hope we do get to see them have such a good day tomorrow. Indeed, great job with the water today, Jen. Thank you very much. We'll see you on land uh, in a short while. We'll be doing our Facebook Live. A good job as well from uh, Nick, our, uh, our nipper. How was it on your first day in the, in the hot seat? Yeah, well, you know, it certainly is different. <laughs> I'm not used to speaking to quite a big audience, but it is just watching sailboat racing and talking uh, about exactly. it. Exactly, that's what basically I keep telling what, what I do all the time. So, exactly, you know. that's what I keep telling myself. No matter what you're watching, <laughs> it's just a boat race, but, uh, you know, good racing today. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, look forward to tomorrow. Hopefully we get uh, continued sea breeze conditions. Uh, Ran Racing really need to start uh, getting back on to the same kind of form they showed the first, uh, first couple of days. Not such a good day for them, but they still uh, have that uh, little lead uh, and uh, sled and quantum racing on the march. A few words about quantum racing then. Pretty good day for them all in all and just moving progressively up the leaderboard. Yeah, they, they shouldn't be upset about today in any way. They got a nice second in the last race there and uh, mid-fleet in the first race, but, you know, sometimes it's just it's difficult to figure out what's going on, and uh, they have been telling me that they've been struggling a little bit on boat handling and speed than they, than they normally are used to, so that might be making it a little bit harder on everybody on board, but certainly uh, with Azura's day, uh, they're going to be pretty happy coming in after today, uh, nice and consistent, you know. Averaging a four is, is not a bad thing in this fleet, especially when things are so close. A few words about Reb Ray Davis, Tommaso Kiefi on the Brennesek. 5-5 five, five, uh, and then 4-4, four, 3-3 four, three, three tomorrow, do you think? Yeah, I don't know. He certainly said he was trying to be consistent, right? <laughs> That's but right. He was a told, three, three, a three, he was told by Morgan to average fifths or fourths, so he's, uh, he's doing that to the letter. <laughs> yeah, well... You know, it's just great to see it be so consistent here. It's really great to see the results so close. You know, even a couple of years ago, there were basically only two good boats in the series with Quantum and Azura that were fairly dominant throughout the series. Um, but now to see nine boats, and this is one of the smaller regattas of the series, right? That's right. I mean, yeah, nine, so nine boats. But, I mean, I think that also there's a little bit of that coming into play when we're talking about uh, the kind of move and counter move moving up to the... Uh, the, when, how far you go out to the uh, to the ley lines? When mm -hmm. you've got nine boats, it's very different to uh, twelve boats. You can afford to just play the the two boat uh, the two boat tax. Yeah, but definitely definitely cool to see the the class get a lot closer and a lot more consistent. There's definitely more more good boats out there. You know, sled going out today, showing that they're very fast upwind and downwind. Great at positioning. Um, Azura making some great gains downwind as well. Platoon two on those downwinds. Um, so. A lot of fast boats out there, a lot of smart guys calling the tactics, and a, a lot of uh, very, very close racing and some great competition. So it's good to see the class uh, start to have some really great racing out there. It's been fun to watch. Good. You're going to join us tomorrow then? Yeah. <laughs> great. Anyway, thank you very much for watching us. Join us again tomorrow. We'll be live uh, on 52 Super Series TV all the way through the, uh, the races uh, and uh, should be great fun. Join us then.